What an awesome opportunity to get in the word and to learn something new. We've been going over the comforter and we know that everybody is excited. Okay, everybody is excited. And we also want to let people know what we've been talking about. We've been talking about how there's a teaching out there that Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to play a few clips. And this is the same camp. And you're going to see that they are in disagreement to what is the Holy Ghost. Here's IUIC. Not your fathers persecuted. Come on. And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Really? Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Come on, watch this. Who have received the law. Who have did what? Received the law. Come on. By the dispensation of angels. So the Holy Ghost is what we resisted. That's the laws of God. So here they're saying the Holy Spirit is the laws of God. I'm going to play another clip. He's stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. So the most high God is calling us a stiff neck or a hard head people. That's what he's calling us. And that's what we are. Read on. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. We resist the Holy Ghost, which is these scriptures, these laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay, there you have it again. IUIC is saying that the laws is the Holy Ghost. Now here comes the puppet master. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Right. Jump up so we know who the Holy Ghost says. Read that. I think it's verse 18. Verse 18. I'm not mistaken. Is that what I want? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I will, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Christ is telling you the comforter is his spirit. Mm -hmm. I will there you have it again. So there's a huge confusion in that camp as to what and who is the Holy Ghost. Now, I have binatarianism on the screen. This is something that is not new. It's been around for quite some time. Binatarianism is the belief in God as two persons, the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit, Binatarians contend, is the same person as Jesus. So, as you can see, what you just heard coming from their leader is Binatarianism, okay? They believe that Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Now we want to do a small recap on what we've been going through. Jesus sent the comforter, not himself. David sent comforters, not himself. Comforters or servants were sent because something devastating happened. According to the Bible, just like David sent comforters when the king of Ammon died. According to the Bible, anytime someone sent comforters, it wasn't their self. And we established the fact that the comforter was not going to speak of himself, but only that which he hears from God. Okay, so there is another teaching that is circulating out there, and that is binatarianism. And I want to show you proof how God is going to be with us forever, but it's going to be in the teachings. So when we get John 16, 7, because we went over this, but we want to go more into detail about this. This is going to be John chapter 16, verse 7. This is the book of John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. All right, so Jesus is saying, I will send him to you. He didn't say, I'm going to send me to you. He is speaking of the Comforter. Now we want to go to John 14, 18. So from our understanding... This comforter is a he, 
and it's not going to speak of himself. So we know this can't be Jesus. Okay, because that wouldn't even make sense. So let's get John 14, 18. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So this is where they get the idea that Jesus is the Holy Ghost, that his spirit is the Holy Ghost, because he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. What does he mean by that? I'm going to show you what he means by that. This is going to be a story involving the rich man. This is going to be in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 29. Because the Holy Spirit or the comforter is going to remain with us forever. How is the comforter going to remain with us forever? Let's get that. This is the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 29. Abraham said unto them, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. All right. So now we're going to get a little context of this scripture and we're going to come back to it. So I want you to go to verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. All right, so this man was in hell. He was in hell. And he was like, please, you know, send somebody to tell my brothers hell is real. And Abraham said, they have Moses and they have the prophets. Now, was Moses alive at this time? No. no. Was the prophets alive at this time? No. no. They wasn't. So what did he mean when he said they have Moses and they have the prophets? The scriptures. They have the scriptures. I'll give you that. I will give you that. But what else? What he meant by that? The teachings. They have the teachings. Okay. So. You're right. They do have the scriptures. Okay. That is right. But most importantly, they have the teachings. They have the teachings. That's how it's going to remain with you forever. All right, chill. Chill, jeez. All right, y'all going crazy. These teachings is going to remain with you forever. So let's get that in John chapter 14, verse 16. This is the book of John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now that word another, I've already explained this, means another of the same kind. Now we know that Jesus was an advocate. So he was praying there is another advocate that's going to come. Okay? Jesus came as a messenger. So he was saying, look, there is another messenger that's going to come. That's what he was talking about. And he is saying that this comforter is going to remain with you forever because he's going to bring teaching that is never going to change. Okay? It's never going to be corrupted. It is going to remain with you forever. Okay? Unlike the scriptures we have today, the scriptures we have today have been altered. They have been changed. That's why God had to make a new covenant. And the new covenant is going to be a law that he's going to write on our hearts. And it's going to remain with us forever. These teachings, okay, will not perish. They're going to remain. And it only makes sense, okay, if we were to go by Bible preservation, it is not the Bible. Those scriptures have been altered, okay? The only sense it could make is the teachings of Islam 
because those scriptures have been preserved in their original language and hasn't been changed. It is the same. It's not written in Hebrew. It's not written in Aramaic. It's not written in Latin. It's not written in Greek. Okay? It's written in the same language it's been in for over 1,500 years. Now, I want to go to Shiloh. Okay? Shiloh is going to be seen in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, 10. A lot of people have no clue as to what the Shiloh is. Because as I'm closing this discussion on the comforter, we have to conclude with Genesis 49.10. Somebody get that. This is the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. All right, so if I tell you, I don't want nobody to leave until I come back. What am I saying? Then I can leave when you come back. There you go. Simple as one, two, three. That's all a child is really worried about. they like, okay. Daddy came back. Now I can leave. I can leave. I can go outside. I can play with my friends. When my dad come back. Okay. So that's the type of answer that is given. All right, y'all knock it off. In Genesis 49.10, he's telling you the scepter, okay, which is the prophethood, is not going to pass from Judah. Until Shiloh comes. So when Shiloh comes, guess what? That scepter is going from Judah to Shiloh. This is why it's well established that Jesus is from what tribe? Judah. Judah. From Judah. He is from Judah. Now I want you to get that scripture. This is going to be Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. It is a popular scripture, okay? I could take you to Matthew chapter 1, where it starts with Abraham, and it goes to David, and it shows you his genealogy, okay? But I just want to hit the nail right on the head. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Okay, so according to the Bible, okay, we ain't focused on the Lord, pardon all that, okay? We're focused on the fact that Jesus is from the tribe of Judah, okay? And then you see from that scripture that Christianity is not really monotheistic, okay? Because in Christianity, you have a middleman. You have to go through Jesus to get to God, okay? Which is different from Islam. You go straight to God. There's no middle man, okay? So going back to where I was at in Genesis 49.10, the scepter is not going to leave Judah, nor a lawgiver. Now, a lawgiver is a prophet. Moses was a prophet. He gave us the law. Okay, anytime the children of Israel deviated from the law, a prophet was given to the nation of Israel to keep them from deviating. So prophets are lawgivers and it's not going to come from no other nation. Okay, it's going to stay within the line of Judah. But when Shiloh gets there, guess what? It's going to pass. And unto this person shall the gathering of the Gentiles be. Shall the gathering of the people be. This is speaking of a worldwide Gentile messenger. Okay. We establish the fact that Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep. The problem with these so-called Israelite camps is they want to say, yeah, Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep. But when he comes back, then all oh, yeah, all nations is going to be gathered and all that bull crap. No, this is talking about a Gentile messenger because it says unto him 
shall the gathering of the people be. It's also going into the obedience of the people. So now I want to talk about Shiloh real quick. Shiloh is formed of four letters. Shin, Yod, Lamed, and High. There is a Shiloh, the proper name of a town in Ephraim. That's in 1 Samuel, etc. But there is no Yod in it. This name cannot be identical with or refer to the town where the Ark of the Covenant or the tabernacle was. For until then, no scepter or lawgiver had appeared in the tribe of Judah. The word certainly refers to a person and not a place. As far as I can remember, all the versions of the Old Testament has preserved this original Shiloh without giving it a rendering. It is only the Syriac Peshitta in Arabic called al Basita that has translated it into he to whom it belongs. So if you follow me, that is basically saying that Shiloh means to whom it belongs. It is easy to see how the translator has understood the word as composed of sh, a bridge form of Asher, he, that, and lo, the Arabic lihu, is his. Consequently, according to the Peshitta, the clause will be read in the following manner. Until he to whom it belongeth comes. So that's what Shiloh means. I'm going to keep going. The personal pronoun, it, may refer to the scepter and the lawgiver separately or collectively. Or perhaps to the obedience in the fourth clause of the verse. The language being poetic, according to this important version, to the sense of the prediction would appear to be plainly this. So this is another translation of Genesis 49.10. The royal and prophetic character shall not pass away from Judah until he to whom it belongs come. For his is the homage of the people or the obedience of the people. Now keep in mind, when Jesus was on earth, he paid tribute to Caesar. This is seen in Matthew chapter 17, 24 through 27. No king would do that, okay, if you are a king, okay? If you a king, you ain't finna pay no taxes. You finna lord it and you finna go to war. But according to the Bible, Jesus paid taxes to Caesar along with Peter. Now, when we look up the word Shiloh, if you was to Google search it, Dr. Ali Atai, a contemporary Muslim scholar of biblical hermeneutics, also argues that Shiloh is Prophet Muhammad, Hamza, Maya, a founding member of Ia Dawa, a debater, and a famous YouTuber, also entertains this argument. Several former Jews and Christians also believe that Muhammad was the Shiloh. So here you have Muslims, you have Jews, and you have Christians who believe that Muhammad was the Shiloh. Also keep in mind, Jesus, his real name is Isa, okay? He, Muhammad, was preceded by Jesus. In other words, Jesus, peace be upon him, came before the prophet Muhammad. But the prophet Muhammad had no successor. He had the title, the seal of the prophets, meaning he was the last and final messenger. Now in the book of Acts, it's a little weird because... We read that there were prophets in the church. But when we look at the Wikipedia of Mohammed, we see that he was preceded by Jesus. In other words, the last major prophet before Mohammed 
was Jesus, peace be upon him. But the prophet Muhammad was the Rasul. He was the last and final messenger. That's why it's such heresy when you have people claim to be prophets and say they are prophets. Y'all need, need, need to stop. 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 And the title Muhammad was given was the seal of the prophets. Now I want to take you to Ezekiel chapter 21 through 25 because this right here is going to kill it. It's just going to kill it. This is the famous scripture I use all the time on people who do not get that Shiloh is the one to whom it belongs and it's not Israel. So let's get that. Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 25. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 25. And thou, profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end. Thus saith the Lord God, Remove the diadem, and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. Alright, so he's saying, look, give me that scepter. Give me that crown. And he's speaking to Israel. He said, your day is come. Now I want you to hold that, and I'm going to get a scripture. Where it literally says, the end of my people has come and there's a few scriptures there's a few scriptures i want amos 8 2 it's on the screen for time's sake this is the book of amos chapter 8 verse 2 and he said amos what seest thou and i said a basket of summer fruit then said the lord unto me the end has come upon my people of israel i will not again pass by them anymore okay so the most high showed amos a basket of summer fruit. <laughs> He's like, look, here's a whole lot of fruit. Okay? And it ain't Israel's fruit. Because God said that Israel would be fruitless. Okay? And Jesus, peace be upon him, he came to the fig tree, which represents Israel, and he cursed it. And he said, no more fruit is going to grow on you forever. So he showed him another nation's fruit. That's what I believe in Amos 8.2. He showed him the fruit. And then he said unto Amos, The end is come upon my people Israel. He didn't say of the world. He said the end is come upon my people. Okay. So now I want to go. Back to where I was at. And I want you to get verse 26 all over. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 26. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. It's not going to be the same no more. Think about all these kings we had of Israel all the time. Our genealogies being written down the way it used to be. He said, look, it's not going to be the same no more. Why? Because now God is going to exalt someone who is low. Someone who is low is not an Israelite because an Israelite is high above everyone else. So he said, you know what? I'm about to change things up. I'm about to look out for those who are low. I'm about to exalt someone of another nation. Okay, which lines up perfectly with Matthew 21, 43. Now I'm going to abase him that's high. Abase means bring down. I'm about to pull down someone who is high. Who's been set high above all nations, everybody? Israel. Who has been set high above all nations, everybody? Israel. Israel. Israel has been set high above all nations. So now, verse 27, let's get that. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. Now that's the definition of Shiloh, okay? To whom it belongs. He said, look, I'm going to overturn it. I'm going to overturn it. I don't care if it's a scepter. That's coming from Judah. I'm going to take it and I am going to pluck it. 
That is seen in Jeremiah chapter 22, 24. As I live, saith the Lord, go Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck it thee thence. Okay, so now I want someone to read verse 26. And I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bare thee, into another country where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. So just like Ishmael and his mama was cast out, God is doing the same thing to Israel. He's casting Jeconiah, which is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. He was a king of Judah from the royal bloodline. Now I'm about to take you and your mama and I'm about to cast you out. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is a time to cast away stones and there is a time to gather stones. So let's keep going in verse 27. But to the land where unto they desire to return, thither shall they not return. They're not finna come back here. And I want you to go to verse 28. Is this man Coniah despised broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast out into a land which they know not? Him and his mama and the whole nation of Israel was cast out. For those of you in Matthew 21, 43, you think it's only talking about the chief priests and the Pharisees and the scribes. No, when God came into a land and he gave word to a prophet to tell them that they were going into captivity, that went for the big people and the small people. All y'all going into captivity. And it's the same thing when God spoke through Jesus and said the kingdom was going to be taken from Israel, that went from the leader as well to the small person. Now let's keep going in verse 29. Oh earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Keep going. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David, and ruling any more in Judah. Now from the Bible, we are reading that there's not going to be any more kings ruling in Judah. This is the reason why Jesus ran and hid when they tried to anoint him and make him king. And they only tried to capture him to see if he could fly. They was going to try to make him the king of Israel. One way or the other. They seen him doing all these miracles and they was like, you know what? Judas, come on. We finna get him. We finna make him the king of Israel. Or he's finna go into custody to the Romans. They sold him out. So according to the Bible in verse 29, just like it says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn in Ezekiel. It's saying the same thing. O earth, O earth, O earth. Hear the word of the Lord. God promised that there was not going to be any more kings ruling in the nation of Judah. And we haven't had a king in Israel, my brother, for 2,600 years. God meant that thing. Now it's time for us to do what we do normally in getting these scripts. Do y'all want to join me? Yay or nay? Yay. Come on. Come on. 